Hi. Do you like our new flag? We're slowly trying to decorate. Today's video was supposed to be like fun, lighthearted. It was supposed to be kind of easy. We were just gonna film ourselves making a bunch of Christmas gifts. What could go wrong? Like, you know, tis the season, we'll make some gifts, it'll be fun. Pretend this never happened. Yes. We're just gonna play the video as if everything is great. So just sit back, relax, and watch us make some Christmas gifts effortlessly without any mistakes. No! Do you see this? It's like completely off center. Did you touch something? No. Guess whose idea this was? Okay, fine, I'll tell you it was mine. We are making Christmas gifts. Basically, we've gotten a few orders of people who want like custom signs and cornhole boards. So that's what we're gonna be doing today. I know it's early, like right now, it's not even Thanksgiving, but it's one of those things where you gotta get it done in time to give it to the person so that they can wrap it and, okay. Anyway, so we've got a couple signs to make. We got some cornhole boards to make. Yep. A cool thing about being roped in to make all your family's gifts and stuff is like people love to brag on your stuff. So if you do a really mm -hmm. good job of marketing and branding your stuff, which should check out the marketing program we have if you're interested in more on that. But hopefully people will do a Google search and find you and maybe order something from you. So it's a great right. opportunity to make some gifts on the cheap as well as get a little marketing done for your business at the same time. I think it is insane that I am wearing a Santa hat with shorts. I I think it's great. I'm usually knee deep in snow. I mean, I'm not complaining, but. Oh, it sounds like you're complaining. Well, I mean, no, I'm really not, no. <laughs> Everything went wrong. No! Do you see this? It's like completely off center. Did you touch something? No. <laughs> yep. It completely fell apart. We had some trouble with the CNC. We had to try this sign like three or four times. Everything was shifting. It was like over two inches further to the right. So we did a two bit carve uh, where we changed the bits in the middle. So we carved the circle of the sign out first and then went back to do the letters. And that's where it got messed up because it was scooting all my tech. I'll just show you. I didn't even finish the sentence down here and it's not centered. Like if you look over here, I've got like that much space between the first letter. And if I bring it over here, that's equal space, but I'm missing two letters. I can't rewrite scripture. I obviously had to redo it. It's the message version. <laughs> Be still and know that I am G. I, <laughs> I don't understand what's wrong with it. The customer would find something wrong with it, that's for sure. I considered like, what if I just let it go and then make a tinier circle? There's not room. So this is where it went off the rails because we didn't know what we were doing wrong. We would look at the laptop, everything was fine there. When we looked at the computer screen, it was all centered. We looked at the router itself, 
everything was fastened down correctly. Wow, we must have, while we were changing the bits, pushed the router over on the gantry. It dawned on us, like out of nowhere. I don't think I did it, Davis didn't do it. We looked back at the footage and we couldn't tell that we had like physically moved it. So I, I don't know what happened. It was like a ghost that came down and moved the router on us. I don't know, but bottom line, we're doing something wrong and we just don't know what it is. And that's what's so frustrating about doing all this business stuff is we can't just go to the shop anymore and just build for fun. Like every time we run into an obstacle, it's not, oh boy, I get to spend a few hours tinkering with my woodworking tools. It's like just glaring problems with our business processes. So we have decided that we are going to try and fix these problems so they don't ever happen again. Yes, we've dealt with these issues before. Like we specifically remember in old signs, the, the carve was shifted slightly, but it always worked out on the signs. But now that we're doing things on a timeline, on a budget, we can't afford to be making these mistakes. We're not just playing around in our garage. And I'll be the first to say it, we hate this machine. It was a pain in the butt to put together. It, we, we constantly have problems with it. Now, we need to separate our inability to use the machine from the machine itself. So we understand there's a little bit of that going on, but at the same time, there are objectively a lot of issues with the software for this, with the way it went together, and honestly, it's structural integrity because you should be able to change the bits without the router moving. I used to have it tied down really tight to the gantry and the motors were having to work too hard and it was getting kind of jittery and stuttery and it wasn't producing very good results for us. So could you guys help? Could you let us know in the comments what we're doing wrong between tool changes? Should we be homing the machine every single time just to negate any micro movements on the gantry? I don't know. And that was one of the things that frustrated us when we tried to look online to find answers to the problems that we were having was because everybody that had an X-Carve was pretty much sponsored by them. At least we couldn't find anybody that wasn't. And when you're sponsored by a tool company, especially someone making CNC machines, there's an undertone of hey, show that this thing is easy to use. A lot of our friends are sponsored by Inventables. I'm not knocking anybody that's sponsored, but what I'm saying is that there's an undertone of, hey, show how easy this thing is to use while making something really, really cool. That's the whole marketing strategy is to show awesome creators building awesome things. And look, they did it with this machine. It turned out great. And we couldn't find anybody that had this specific machine that was having the problems that we were having. I don't know, maybe they're out there. We just didn't find them. So now we're on a mission to optimize the CNC for business use. And I'll run over to the whiteboard and we'll go over our plan. First off, what issues are we having? We're having issues changing bits. Every time we do that, it bumps it slightly, moves it on the gantry, and then all of a sudden it screwed up our X, Y, zero. Now, this dust shoe is the most miserable thing I think I've interacted with. It is the reason why I have any frustration with the CNC like from the get-go. Getting onto the machine as a whole, it's hard to snap in there. It doesn't fit right. It's extremely difficult to pull out and pop out. It bumps into things in the middle of the car. It's extremely difficult to move up and down. It's very poorly engineered and it takes us forever to even get it set. For an $1,800 tool, I would expect something a lot better. So we have to figure out how we're gonna solve that problem because we're wasting too much time on it now. And I also think we're moving the router on the gantry when we're attaching and detaching that dust shoe because it does take so much work to get it on and off. The software that we use is kind of made to help you solve some of your problems. Basically, the CNC is, is dumb, it's stupid. It does exactly what you tell it to do. You say do X, it does X exactly. It has no idea what you mean, what any intentions are or anything like that. So the software we're using now is Easel by Inventables and it is simple, it's kind of like plug and play and it's kind of keeping us from understanding how it works because one day we wanna buy a nice expensive CNC. Let's say down the road we buy a $10,000 CNC for the business. We wanna know exactly how it works so that we can write procedures for it that somebody who's never used a CNC in their life can pick up and follow and easily understand. But we can't even begin to write those procedures until we understand how it works. So we wanna do a little bit more research on other software options just so we can learn more. So we know of a couple, but if you have any good recommendations, please leave them in the comments for us to check out. We'd really appreciate that. All right, so right now, these are what we need to focus on. These are our immediate problems. This is what we need to tackle. Not good. The patient is bleeding out. When I say patient, I mean my patience. I'm going to lose it. So that's what we're gonna focus on now. But long-term, we have some other things we wanna focus on. 
Long term, we also want to look into framing materials. So we know we mostly want to use this CNC for signs, but we need to optimize the material we use for frames. That being said, we also need to optimize sizes for our signs. We also need to narrow down the amount of bits we use because we don't want to be messing around with 15 different bits. We need to find the ones we use the most, buy the best version of that bit available. And we also need a clamping down method. And when I say a clamping down method, when we clamp the piece to the base of the CNC, sometimes it's hard to line up the part holding it down and where the router is going to come through on its final pass and we'll clip some of these clamps a couple of times. That's not sustainable, that's very wasteful. There's a better way to do it. We wanna experiment with some double-sided tape, basically. And then lastly, we need to optimize our painting and finishing processes for signs specifically. So these are all the things we've gotta figure out. I know it's a lot, but if we wanna do this seriously and start hiring employees and have a set process, we need to start figuring it out now. A lot of you were asking in the last couple of videos why I use 409 to raise the grain. Uh, I just think it's a better product. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. It's just water. Uh, I'm going to tear the label off so as to not confuse anybody else. a ton of ways that we could fix these problems that we're having with the CNC. Because we're coming at this with the mindset of owning a business and running it as a business, we need to choose a solution that's gonna be best for us. First off, to get repeatable results. We want the same thing to happen every time we do it. So there are no surprises, there are no last minute mistakes, and we're not wasting time because we didn't know something was gonna happen. We want to minimize complexity. We want it to be as simple as possible to run this CNC. Like we said, we wanna systemize it to eventually get it put into a checklist. We understand that number three, which is maximizing quality, is kind of in competition with and against minimizing complexity, but that's where we need to find a balance. So we need to minimize the complexity, but we also need to have wow factor. All right, and then number four, last but not least, faster is better. Our time is extremely valuable to us, and it is to the customer too, because they're paying for it. So these four things right here, this is the lens through which we're gonna look for solutions to all of our problems. <laughs> It was a long way to get to these Christmas yes. presents. <laughs> My family's doing Christmas a little early this year, so that's why this video has been out. Yeah, this was a lot of fun. We're slowly peeling back layer after layer yeah. of problems we need to solve with the business, which is fun, it's just exciting, because it only ever has to be done once. Yes. Once you build the initial checklist, if the software changes, if you find a better tool, all you gotta do is go in and change the checklist. It's not completely reinventing the wheel every single time that you need to make a procedure. We can't just do one-offs anymore. We can't just say, well, glad it happened to work this time, got it done on time, so. Yeah, we gotta have repeatable results, so. Right. As promised, we are launching our programs today. Yay! Uh, we launched them unofficially earlier this week on Instagram. We're giving you guys $30 off just for Black Friday, so you gotta use the code BLACKFRIDAY30 and you'll get $30 off any program other than the business mindset one. That one's only five bucks. We picked the very best program and we lower the price to five bucks because yes. we want as many people that are serious about starting a business to watch that one as possible. 
So we've got four new programs total for you. The first one we already talked about is the Business Mindset Program. It's just all about how to get your mind right, how to think like a business mm -hmm. owner. It's the most valuable one. That's all of the information that we wish we would have known when we started this. The other stuff is just the details. You can learn those through experience, but the mindset is what really propels you to the next levels. The next one is sales. We've completely overhauled our sales program. We give you guys scripts, live recordings of phone calls we've done making sales. Uh, just lots of really good value in there of how to take a casual conversation and close it to a, a, a paid deal because hey, there's nothing more awkward than when someone says, oh yeah, I'd like to buy that. Like, you, where do you go from there? Yeah. I don't know, it used to, used to make me stop in my tracks. So. And we just discuss a lot of things that you already have at your fingertips that you already have available to you that you can just start taking advantage of and kind of look at in a different light because you are now a business owner. We also have an entire program now on marketing. It's all about how to build a machine to find customers. Uh, if you do good marketing, you will have the customers coming to you in an automated system. That way all you have to do is pick up the phone or type up an email and close the deal and you can get to building. And within that one, we have a list of 50 marketing ideas that you can do like now. And then the last one is our very best, we did a video on this not too long ago, it was about sketching furniture. Now, yeah. I know you don't have any talent for drawing and that doesn't it sound interesting to you. Neither we do neither we. <laughs> but it's the best method we've found for getting the client invested emotionally in the project. Yeah. They're not gonna change their mind halfway through, or if they do, it's much less likely. They're not gonna cancel the order halfway through your, you building it. Uh, it's just a way to bring what's in their imagination onto paper. Mm -hmm. That way they're less likely to try and change the plan on you halfway through the process. So we've been burned by that a couple times, but we found that if we draw the picture, go watch that video, it's a really valuable technique, but we learned that if we could just make a chicken scratch drawing of what it's gonna look like, People, people are like, people quit oh, changing I can things. see it now. They quit, yeah, they, they get excited about it, yeah. they quit changing things, and you have the creative freedom to then go build and deliver it. And also, it's about stuff on how to meet the customer, how to sit down with them, how to look professional, what to bring, what to say, that sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, so those are the first four that we've dropped. We're super excited about them. Uh, the people that have already bought them have just been giving us great, great feedback. We even used your feedback on the old programs yes. to make these ones better. So we really appreciate you. Please go get your $30 off. And uh, yeah, please let us know how, what you think of the program. We'd, we'd love to hear your feedback. Yeah. We can always improve and make them better in the future, so. This video did not go originally as planned. No, no it did not. But we ended up making a lot more progress than just making a few Christmas presents, mm -hmm. so.